Jew and why spend the next few minutes watching a speech like ours with 100% of your attention? Is it because it's that you're going to learn something? Is it because you're going to become a better person? Or is it because it's just going to be fun? Well, what you just said are the main, the core values of a game. So, at this point, we would like to invite you to play a game with us. By show of hands, who here wants to play a game? Alright, alright. Well, you came to the right place, let's begin. And how would we start playing a game if you hadn't raised your hands and if we hadn't become a team? Firstly, we need a team. Because of the team, we can have support. You, we can have different opinions. We can have different views. And also, the biggest our team is, the better chances to win the game. Our next core value is S for society. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is because all of you here want to play a game. All of you here have a purpose. But in the system of society, there are many teams, there are many purposes, and so we play many games. And sometimes your game and my game, his game and her game, are going to come into conflict. And that's all right. We all want to play our games. But bear in mind, if you want to play a big game, there's going to be conflicts, there's going to be barriers. But don't get discouraged. It means you're playing a big game. Keep playing, that's how society works. And then we come on to our next core value. And of course, how we can talk about a team and a game without having a clear vision, a clear image in our mind on where we would like to go, where we would like to reach. The vision keeps our team together, keeps our team inspired, keeps our team engaged. And also, if we can see where we would like to go, we can take also other people with us on our journey and grow our team bigger. We need a clear vision. That's right. And I would like to ask at this point, why do visions fail? Why do visions fail? And you might have guessed it, it's because of lack of communication. When you don't have communication, you can't communicate the vision. I mean, you all know lack of communication. You come home late at night to find your partner or your mother, and they tell you, honey, did you get the eggs? And you're like, what? What eggs? I told you about the eggs. You never told me about the eggs. Lack of communication. It happens to all of us. And it's the number one reason why visions fail. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what is the place with the most visions, with the most dreams, with the most goals, all in the same place? You know what place is that? The graveyard. <laughs> in the graveyard, you will find visions that never happened, dreams that never became true, because nobody could communicate them, because they were dead. And in order to be able to communicate something efficiently, we need to be able to influence other people. And what can we say about influence? Influence is the power to have an important effect on someone or something. When we try to influence other people, it means that we're changing a person towards a direction really, really significantly. There are some times, though, that we can face some really bad influences. And some of them are a destruction. So, Cosadinos, what he's doing right now, he's paying attention to his mobile phone, social media, right? Internet, and he's not paying attention to my speech. So, at the end of the day, he will not get the added value that we will, we will all have here today. If he would pay attention, he would be able to give me a warm handshake. Oh, hi. And be able to feel my passion and my influence about this. Yeah, I feel that's right. That was an example of positive influence. And positive influence is what encourages us, what takes us forward, what gives us passion. And we would like, ladies and gentlemen, to give you an example of what we are passionate about.
Πώς έκανε το νερό της πραγματικότητας. Αυτό που έχεις βάλει εσύ σε αυτό, αυτό που εσύ έχεις πρόθεση να κάνεις. Αν ακολουθείς κανείς, αυτά τα βήματα, με αυτόν τον τρόπο, θα φτάσει πιο κοντά, θα είναι πιο σύντομα και πιο εύκολα τη σκάλα προς την δική του. One of our very first speeches took place one year ago when the speakers were just born. This is a speech that took place in Athens Science Festival last year, where what happened back then was really great for us. And to be honest with you, I could never have imagined that one year after that, and after a really, really simple idea about creating speakers, we'd be standing here at a TEDx event sharing our opinions. Really? <laughs> but check it out, we are here. Yeah, we are at a TED event. And the amazing thing, ladies and gentlemen, is when this event that we're all here to share happened, the list of speakers was full and we were not in it. So what, where does this bring us? Bring us to the fact that if you have passion, you can overcome almost any kind of obstacle that comes into your way. The passion is the key ingredient in order to play and have great chances to win a game. 100%. Passion opens doors. Passion is what will drive you forward, and passion is the key ingredient to play and have really, really great chances to win the game. But along with the passion, you need to have power. And when we say power, we mean that you have to endure, you have to last, you have to be among the best players of the game. Right. And in order to do that, you need to be engaged. Mm. And also you need to persevere exactly like one of my greatest heroes did. I suppose that some of you might know Terry Fox. Terry Fox is, a, was a Canadian athlete that he embarked on a cross Canada race from east to west in order to increase awareness and raise money for cancer research back in 1980. He did that with one leg. After 143 days of running and 129 marathons, almost one marathon per day, he stopped because his cancer spread all over his body. But this left us our worldwide legacy. Just because Terry Fox endured, right now the Terry Fox Foundation is the biggest, the largest world fundraiser day event for cancer research. Wow, that's amazing. How many marathons? 129 marathons. 129 marathons? In 143 days. Wow, that's amazing. With one leg. That's power, ladies and gentlemen. And that's, of course, mental power, not just physical power, to run all that for a cause, for a game you really believe in, like he did. Another example of great mental power is the gentleman on the screen. What you might not know about him is that he failed in eight elections. He had two businesses that completely collapsed. His wife died and he was admitted to the hospital with a nervous breakdown. But he persevered. He continued through all these obstacles because he had a big game. And the result? He became the 16th president of the United States of America, Abraham Lincoln. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our next core value, responsibility. Now I know that might be a tough word, but let's break it down. Responsibility is broken down to two words, ability and respond. It's the ability to respond. It's when something happens in your environment, in your zone of influence. Do you do something about it? Do you take responsibility or do you not? Do you say, ah, not my problem? For example, you, sir, you're walking on the street and you see a piece of trash. Do you leave it there? You say somebody else's problem? Or do you pick it up and you put it in the recycling bin? That's responsibility. And that's a core value in playing a game because when you're responsible, you're accountable. You can confront issues better, you can be a better player. And of course, you should know that already, but with the responsibility, great expectations are being born, and that's okay. 
We need expectations in our lives in order to proceed, in order to keep going, right? We need expectations. But what happens most of the times is the following. We have extremely high expectations, not being born only by us, but most of the times are external expectations. Expectations of the society, expectations of other people that expect from us to win the game. Right? We cannot win the game if it's not our expectations. There are expectations like you have to get married by 35. If you get married, you have to do two kids. Because if you do not do two, two kids and you have one, someone will ask you, why don't you do a second one? Right. You're like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I open up a startup co company, I have to make it successful. And by the end of the year, I have to make 5 million turnover. Is it my expectation? Is this the real one? The real expectation, my expectation, will keep me a track on track and will make me, give me a push in order to win the game. Yeah, I get it. Like, it makes me think of how my parents, oh, yeah. I'm, the, I'm the firstborn, where three, three brothers and sisters, yeah. I'm the firstborn, they're like, you have to be a doctor. You have to finish before then, or you'll be a failure. That put a lot of expectation. So I get, I get what you're saying. And I think that most of us here understand what we say about wrong expectations. Yeah. And that brings us to the next value, which is environment. And what do we say when we mean environment? We mean the rules of the game. How can we play a game and have chances to win if we do not know the rules of it? Yeah. And the environment that we're going to step in. So we must learn all about the game, our game. And now you can see a picture of me running the Olympus Marathon three years ago where the 95% of my people told me that I would fail and I'm overweight and I will not be able to complete it. The truth is that I did one thing. Apart from my, my passion, I studied the environment, the terrain, the fueling stations, and the weather conditions. These studies brought me successfully to the finish line. Well done. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> and that brings us to our last core value, which is ethics. Now, this is a Greek audience, so I'm not going to analyze ethics to you. No, no, no. I wouldn't do that mistake. But what I'm going to tell you is, if you're ethical, you play by the rules of the game. If you're unethical, you will tend to break the rules of the game. Now, whatever one you choose, that's your own personal choice. But we would like to warn you, if you break the rules, be ready to pay the price. Because when you break the rules, there's consequences. And when there's consequences, I don't know if you're ready for them. So remember, pay the price and then make the decision. These are the core values, ladies and gentlemen. And that brings us to the question. I would like to ask you a question. Do you play a game just to have fun? Or do you play a game for a chance to win? Most probably the second one. And what we did today is that we presented you the core values in order to play a game. But if you want to win the game apart than just playing for it, you have to transform your perspective. Use these core values, find your why, and win the game. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Two people playing a game are better than one. In any game, any situation, any challenge, two is better than one. Also, in order to win the game, you must have in your mind that two perspectives are better than one. Two is better than one. one.